Hi, I'm Laurie. This is part four of Photon Beam Characteristics. We're going to talk about MU calculations. Yay! So we've been through inverse square law, scatter attenuation, and depth of curves. Uh, so this is a video four and a quiz four. Uh, you can use in conjunction with this. So um, physicists do those calibration conditions in a water tank, and uh, we ensure that the those uh, the those per monitor unit at these calibration conditions equals one. And so, but the difficulty is that uh, a patient is not made of water always at SSD 100 uh, and always 10 by 10 field size, etc. So, the dose per MU in the patient in the target volume varies. So that's where the MU calculations come in. So the MUs, though, are monitor units and they're proportional to the charge collected in the monitor chambers. So the job of the monitor chambers is to make sure the radiation coming out of the machine is a constant dose rate. And uh, that's above the jaws in the MRC. And so one monitor unit is one centigrade at reference conditions. Stanford are reference variant machines. Are Stanford, uh, reference conditions are one centigrade is one mu at B max, which is the depth of maximum dose in water at SSD 100, 10 by 10 field size. Each energy has its own charge per mu settings because each energy gives different charge. So the, this independent each energy is independently calibrated to have this, but to these same conditions, one centigrade is one mu. The, I should, um, I'm just limiting this discussion to photons where electrons are similar. So the ME formula for photons for a PDD or SSD setup are as follows. So the, the MU is a prescription dose. This dose rate is one uh, if you have good physicists. And um, then there's this thing I've called inverse square factor, which accounts for uh, conditions that were if you're treating a different SSD other than the calibration SSD. And then similarly, if you want to move away from a field size that is 10 by 10, then you have to use a diff an output factor that's something other than one. And if you want to move down in depth, you, you adjust the PDD. If you want to look at dose off axis or with a wedge or with a blo uh, block or tray factor, and you have to uh, adjust these factors. But for nice simple cases, most of our cases with SSD setup would be SSD 100, now it's the same as the calibration, so then a few of these terms drop out and you're just mainly concerned with the PDD, and the output factor. If you don't have any blocks, any wedges, if you're only looking at dose on the central axis of the beam, and all the terms drop out, and you just got. Uh, oh, and field size is 10 by 10, then you just look at the PDD. So let's uh, try and reinforce this a little bit. So we calculate those prime U different conditions using relative factors. So if uh, we have a point here that's at a calibration condition, 200 MU is 200 centigrade. Then we want to calculate the dose 5 cm deeper. All we're doing is changing the depth. You just move down the PDD curve. You find what the PDD for 5 cm is. It's 85%. So 200 divided by 85 over 100 gives you 235 monitor units. So this depth A, 5 cm deep, 235 monitor units are needed to get deliver 200 centigrade. A different thing is if, if you wanted to just move the phantom down, but just keep the depth the same. So still at D max, but we're just treating SSD 110 now. Now for that, you need to change this inverse square factor. So uh, you go from 100 to 110 SSD. So 
So some thumb rules to keep us safe and give some general understanding. 3D plans with each field fully covered in a field, such as in breast tangential breast treatments. Your MU and centigrade should be within about 30% of each other. So, for example, if we have this breast tangent case, we have 267 centigrade per fraction, and we have two fields, and the multi-units for these two fields adds up to 310 MU. So 310, 267, they're similar, so that's good. If you, if you see things in multi-units that are not similar to the dose per fraction for 3D plans, then you should probably check it or think about it a little bit, make sure it's correct. There are cases where it is correct, but just to have extremely different MU, but often, you know, it can be a, a red flag or a mistake. For VMA IMRT, the thermal is a bit less useful because the range is much higher than MUs can be typically much higher than the than the dose per fraction. And that's because the MLCs are blocking most of the radiation most of the time. But we do like to keep it reasonably low, so in general, uh, and when it's very high ratio of MU per centigrade, it typically indicates that the MLCs are opening many, many small openings, and then the dose delivered through these small openings is a little bit, can be a little bit less reliable. So let's just go through a 3D Holborn example multi-unit calculation. So we have a, let's say we want to treat a whole brain, SSD setup, 100 SSD, 6 MB energy, 300 centigrade per fraction, two lateral fields, field size 18 by 22 cm. Use equivalent square 4 out over the, four times the area of the perimeter Actually, you can simplify that a little bit by top and bottom fraction by 2. And you do that 4 a over P, you get equivalent square is 19.8. So and that's reasonable. It's some number between 18 and 22. And then separation uh, is, uh, gives us 16 cm, so that we know the depth. Uh, where we want to calculate a multi unit. So it's in the center, so it's 8 cm deep. So now we need to find a PDD for a field size of 20 by 20, 8 cm deep, SSD 100. We also need to know the output factor for this field size, 20 by 20. And, and this third term, TF, is the tray factor. So first thing, output factor, 20 by 20 is from the table here, 1.057. And again, for the PDD table, we go across, we find the 20 by 20 field size, and we go down in depth, we find 76.8% of this depth and this uh, field size. We plug it in, we've got the equivalent square already, we've got the 300 centigrade per fraction, the output factor, 1.057, the PDD divided by 100 is 0.76. Eight, and then we have this third thing, tray factor, which is a number slightly less than one, and that is just because the eye blocks are blocking some of the radiation, so we just scale up the MUs a little bit. But all together, we get 377 MU. So, uh, so a quick question. Is this 377 mu per field or per fraction? So it would be 754 mu per fraction, or would it be 377 mu per fraction, i.e. 189 mu per field? So the answer is 189 mu per field, so we have to divide it by two because we're delivering the dose, two different fields from both sides, each side. Quick way to think about this, like I said before, is your prescription dose per fraction and your MU per fraction should be similar for 3D plans. So 754 MU is way too high for a 300 centigrade treatment. So don't do this. That would be a medical event because it's about double the dose. 
you get a happy cat if you uh, divided the MU divided by the number of fields you're using. So another way, another, and so that's PDD is just one um, way to a depth dose system. There's another way to uh, move down in depth. So, but, so PDD, like I said, it's PDD is moving down in depth, and you're actually changing two things. You're changing the depth, and you're changing your source to point distance. But you're keeping the SSD of the phantom or patient surface constant. The other way to scan in depth is to change the SSD, but keep the source to point distance constant. So this is TMR or TPR. And TMR, you go from, it's the ratio of the, of the depth at maximum dose, and then you're moving the phantom to change the depth rather than the detector. And this has some advantages. So for PDD, you use SSD setup for PDD because PDD is constant SSD. An SAD setup where the where SAD refers to the constant source to axis distance as the, the the point of measurement where point where we're calculating dose is on the central rotation axis of the machine. Then we use a TMR curve. We went to, another advantage of TMR curve is it's independent of SSD, whereas PDD is dependent on SSD, so you have to have a different PDD for each different SSD. So just to reinforce this, so a simple two-beam SSD treatment, you would shift, you would have, for example, you would have an anterior beam, and then you would shift the patient to keep the surface constant the same for the posterior beam. We do that by shifting the couch. In SAD setup, you'd have the targets centered on the center of rotation of the machine. Oh, my little video is in the way, but um, <clears throat> the posterior beam, you wouldn't have to shift the patient. No, because they're already on the central uh, rotation axis. Just to clarify terms, TPR is tissue phantom ratio. TMR is a special case tissue maximum ratio, and it equals the TPR, but uh, if and only if the reference depth is D is D max. So just to show you like what PDD and what TMR look like, uh, both scans uh, functions of, uh, of depth that are normalized to the depth of maximum dose. The PDD is divided by 100 is steeper. It falls off more steeply. Question why is that? That's because the TMR curve is, is basically only an attenuation, whereas the PDD curve, you're moving the source to point distance uh, uh, as you increase depth. So you're also got an inverse square factor in there. You're basically moving further away from the radiation source in the PDD curve. With the TMR curve, you're not really, uh, you're keeping same constant source to point distance, but you're changing the depth by moving the phantom closer to the radiation source. Just reinforce, TMR is independent of it. So for MU calculations with a TMR curve, there's SAD setup, where your patient is target is centered at the rotation axis of the machine. We have a different formula. It's very similar, apart from instead of PDD divided by 100, we have TMR, and instead of and the inverse square factor has changed slightly because uh, we now have constant source to point distance. It still simplifies in the same way, so you have different uh, 
if you don't use wedges, um, if you're only looking at central axis, for example, then a lot of these terms drop out. If you're just looking at SAD setup, that is 100 cent the target at 100 centimeters from the radiation source. And then uh, your inverse square factor drops out, and, and you just have to concern yourself with the dose, the output factor, which is a function of field size, TMR curve, which is a function of depth, and uh, any uh, off axis wedges or tray uh, blocks that you need to account for. Just go through the same whole brain example, but now with SAD setup, so we're centering the center of the brain to uh, midline to 100 SSD from the source, 100 centimeter from the radiation source. Same thing, same equivalent square, same thing. Just look up the tabulated TMR instead of the PDD. So when we plug that in, we got 334 monitor units. Whereas before we had 377 for the 100 cm SSD setup. I ask why is it lower monitor units? Because basically with the SAD setup, the patient is 8 cm closer to the radiation source. Because 8 cm closer, the dose rate, the dose per monitor unit is higher, so we need less monitor units. That's it. That's P uh, that is MU calculation 101. Please use this quiz to try and consolidate your knowledge. Thanks.